See, my mind is like, I don't know how to describe it. I dream of some things, I see something, I see nature, I'm inspired by nature. I can look at flowers and think, okay, those branches are drying out, they look nice. Why can't I probably make a necklace that resembles branches? Growing up, um, my mom used to make us clothes. Uh, she had a little hand-woven singer sewing machine, mm -hmm. and um, I used to see her making us clothes. She used to make us these really pretty pinafore dresses. So I used to make clothes for my doll, my little doll. My dad is a fashion, was a fashion designer. He trained at the prestigious Godwinners College here in England in the early 70s. So I think it's something that's always been in my veins. When I thought, okay, I came here, was bored, moved to England, was bored. So I thought, okay, um, why don't I do something with myself? Bought a sewing machine, just started joining pieces together. It was a brother sewing machine, I remember vividly. I don't know what I did with it. It stopped working. Looked brand new, but it stopped working. But yeah, that's, that's how it started. You know that everything started in Africa, right? All the civilization, all the fashion fads that we're seeing now started in Africa. Like seriously, the first dress was in Africa, in Egypt. Look <laughs> down, mm. <coughs> sideways. Nice, it's that nice. Um, my brother. Wow. Come, okay, let's get you back. Smile. Did you look at your lips? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I use Reto fabric and people will be like, oh, she must be a witch doctor. Oh, why is she using this fabric? Oh, it's taboo. But people don't actually know that the chevron style on that Reto fabric, which is very vintage, by the way, because it's been going on for years and years and years and years, mm -hmm is actually something that we see on the pyramids in Egypt. And the pyramids were built by our ancestors, the black ancestors. But you see with me, it's just not about African fashion. It's about who we are as a people, bringing back everything ancient about our culture, our history in a fashionable way. So it's wearable culture, if you want, or wearable history. The kaftan that I call the Nehanda um, Afro kaftan is something that's been there for years, over 4,000 years. Like it goes back into the ancient era where the kaftans were worn by the royal families. And I kept on thinking, okay, everybody's doing this kaftan thing. How can I make mine different? And I kept looking on Mbuya Nehanda's picture where she has that tie thingy on, on, on the side. And I thought, hold on a minute. I can do my kaftan, but I can tie it on the side. So when people see the kaftan, they probably see, oh, it's a kaftan. But to me, it's remembering and keeping the deity alive. Like, she did a lot of things for us as black people, as Zimbabweans. So how do I keep her memory alive? How do I say thank you? When you're so far away from home, your culture becomes like your centerpiece is like who you are. So when you have an identity, you don't get stressed. And when you don't get stressed, you don't get mental health problems. Does it make sense? So it's a long way, it's a slow process that I intend to keep on bringing out cultural heritage, um, images and symbols, because that's part of who we are as a people. But it's getting lost because of a lot of things that we don't want to go into now. <laughs> yeah.